This is Road to the Golden Door, where we unpack the proven success formula straight from the minds of Golden Door winners, uncovering the motivation, methods, and the mindset it takes to become an elite performer in door-to-door -door sales and in life. This is Road to the Golden Door. Now, here's your host, Mikey Lucas. What up? Welcome back. Road to the Golden Door. We have a super special guest today, Chuck Mills from The Grit. Welcome to the podcast, brother. What up, man? How are we doing? Great, great. Good to see you again. Glad to uh, be here. Yeah, man. Uh, looked, uh, you looked really good on stage this year, just so you know. <laughs> Appreciate it. You clean up, you clean up really, really well with, uh, with all the boys, man. You guys are, you guys are outstanding, and uh, I want to just make sure that everybody knows, if you're not following The Grit, uh, if you're not following Chuck, I need you guys to. Um, it is 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 awesome to see the standard that the grit has um, and for the industry as a whole. So I'm uh, I'm really excited to have you on here, bro. Hundred percent, man. I'm I'm stoked to be here. Awesome, 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 dude. Well, cool, dude. Um, normally I get right into it, um, but I want to tell you this first. Um, last year, my goal uh, was to have the number one, the most Golden Door Award winners on stage in the whole industry. And right. I had seven, but I got my ass kicked by you guys. So the gloves are <laughs> off. And, uh, you know, obviously we're not enemies, but uh, the gloves are off. You're going to see a totally new Mikey this year. You're going to see a totally new, uh, a totally new, you know, uh, what I'm doing. So I'm uh, okay. really excited to, uh, to have you guys now. Uh, I'm going to put the grit everywhere. The grit's coming to get you, Mikey, so that, uh, you know, oh, next to my it. bed in the gym. And uh, I'm coming for you guys. So I'm excited, bro. I hope... Uh, I hope I hope 25 is enough to beat you guys. If it's not, I hope I get 30. So I'm excited for it. We we absolutely love the challenge. Let's if, go. If you get 25, we'll get 30. Ah, dude, <laughs> you're gonna make ah, you're gonna make me work even harder. I love it. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna become as efficient as I possibly can and put as many guys on stage this year. So all right, bro. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know Chuck Mills, who's Chuck Mills? So I am from Atlanta, Georgia. That's where I grew up. Me to you. Uh, Graduate ATL baby, uh, Braves got the championship last year, so finally. Oh. Um, my, but, my Houston boys, my Houston boys got it. Cause I'm in Houston now. I'm not a Houston fan, yeah. but Houston's got it now. So. And then uh, the dogs are back to back. Let's so. go, dude! Hey, dude! Let's go, man! Yeah. Um, dude, that was so, wild. You like you? You were probably going crazy during that game, huh? Oh, for sure, dude! Oh my gosh, dude! <laughs> dude foot, football in the South is just. It, it's a little life. different. It's life, bro. It, it breeds dominance. Yes. So as a former high school football player, I can attest yes. to a small fraction of that. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I graduated high school there, moved out to Utah to go to Brigham Young, okay. um, LDS, Mormon. So after a year of college, went on a mission to the Philippines, uh, which was incredible. It was life-changing. Um, I mean, you're, you're literally living on an island for two years, so... Uh, lots of challenges that came with that, but tons of, tons of personal growth and, and overall just incredible experience. And then, uh, came back to BYU and then, um, that's kind of when I got introduced to the whole door to door, uh, door to door in Utah is, uh, crazy, <laughs> especially coming from someone that's never heard about it growing up. I mean, I always, I tell my, like a bunch of my friends, like the net, the next like Netflix film that comes out about like stuff we don't know about, it needs to be about door to door in Utah nice. and just nice. the culture of everything, because it's pretty wild and, and no one really knows about it. But, um, so yeah, that first summer, uh, was at Green X, uh, was recruited by my buddy Jackson Jr. And, uh, we went out to Grand Rapids. And that summer I did, this is summer 2019. Copy. Um, what year so yeah, were you in college at that point? What year were you in? Just finished my sophomore year. Cool. Yep. So. You held um, out for two years, huh? What was that? You held out for two years to get in a door to door. Two full years you got in. Oh, well, I did my freshman year. Um, and then I went on my mission that summer. Okay, cool. cool, cool. And then I got back at okay, uh, awesome. the end of the summer. So it was really my first chance to to give it a go. And so, yeah, went out there, you know, kind of like everyone else, just hoping to, 
make enough that it's worth it really, you know, 20 grand, 30 grand. And, uh, was with an awesome team of just, just some killers to be honest and really helped me elevate my game. And I ended up selling 330 accounts that year out of 540 ACV, which was really awesome back then. Uh, made like 75 K in take home. And, uh, that was life changing. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I sold, you've, you've heard of Cutco, right? Of course. Okay. So I actually, I sold Cutco my senior year and, uh, I thought I killed it cause I made 10 grand and I was like, dude, I'm rich. Like, this is sick. Uh, maybe I could do sales or something in the future, but, um, it was kind of that experience that kind of gave me like a little bit of confidence I needed to go out and try door to door. And so I'm grateful for that. Uh, but yeah, I made 75 grand and I'm like, holy crap, this is, this is amazing. Yeah. Um, but my real goal, um, in like going to BYU and studying business is I just wanted to just really have like a fun life where I can go on vac vacations with my future family and have a nice house, have a pool, not be stressed, you know, um, didn't really have the drive to like have some billion dollar business, but I, I really just wanted to, you know, have a great life. And so kept, uh, I was finance. I got into the BOU Marriott school, which is a really awesome school. And, um, I was a finance major. So even after making like that great money the first year, I was really still, still shooting for kind of going the finance route. And, uh, so did that year, that's the year when COVID happened and I was kind of planning on going to do some sort of finance internship, but everything kind of fell through. And so gave door to door, uh, another go round two. And it's funny because that year I was really just planning on hoping to make the same amount. Really. I didn't have some crazy aspiration to, uh, to like go make hundreds of thousands. And, uh, um, that year Jackson recruited Drew Hansen to his team. And so it was us three going out to Indianapolis and that summer pretty much changed my life because, uh, I was with Drew who was crazy as we all know. <laughs> and he really just opened my eyes to like the possibility of what this job can be. And, really like just the potential you have if you're willing to go out there and work for it. And so that year, um, we crushed it and I ended up selling like 600, 680 accounts at like a 620 or 640 ACV. Um, so that year was incredible. I made like cl pretty close to 200 grand. And at that point I was like, dude, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. Like, I mean, I, I don't even feel like I've scratched the surface and I'm making, you know, crazy money. So real, real bug money, seriously, man. And so it was kind of at that point I started to just look at what made sense for me. And it's like, sure. I could keep, you know, spending 70 hours a week studying in the, in the BYU library, or I can like, I can go maximize this thing that I'm like, I think I can be pretty freaking good at. And so kind of put college on a pause at that point and um, just went all in on door to door. And I'm super grateful that I did that because I'm in a great spot now. And uh, so went all in that third summer, I was like, okay, I, I know I can be like, if not the best, one of the best, like, let's go do this thing. And so that year I went, uh, out to Detroit, started early, March 1st, let's go. I was out there on the doors. D-Town. Uh, D-Town. Yeah. I actually started in, uh, Texas cause there's still snow everywhere in Detroit in March. Yeah. And so I was in San Antonio, um, which was pretty freaking cool and, uh, did like a month and a half there. And then I moved up to Detroit. 
And uh, that summer, I was dead set, hell bent on doing a thousand accounts. And it took everything out of me for sure, but I got it done. And uh, that summer was like pretty crazy because I had a lot of challenges come up. And I'm sure we might dive a little deeper into those, but it was crazy to me, like, to, sh to like really see like what kind of resolve I, I was made of that, like I was able to make it happen despite everything. And, um, after that summer, I just sold a thousand accounts, uh, 700 K in revenue. And then, um, that was my first golden door, just really awesome. And then, uh, this past summer I was out in, um, Austin, Texas for half the summer. And then I was in uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, which was a vibe and, uh, got another golden door, 700 K. Uh, this year was really cool though. Cause I, I did the same amount of revenue as I did my thousand account year, but I did it in two and a half less months, Ooh, let's go. which was just awesome, man. Cause like at the end of the day, time is money, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I really leveled up this year and just got way better at like the mental side of the job and not being so emotional about it and just being consistent, man, and really breaking it down to a science. And, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, uh, this, this upcoming year, it's, uh, it's the year to do a million. Uh, that's kind of like the next, the next, W on the slot coming up. So pretty excited about it. Let's go, dude. Appreciate you sharing that, man. I uh, got some questions for you now. Cool. Um, first off, did your parents support you going in a door door? Yes. Yeah, they totally did. I know it's kind of like I've, I've had, I obviously have tons of friends and I know it's like kind of a mixed bag. Some parents don't, <laughs> some parents hate it. I mean, some parents like it. I've been fortunate that my parents have literally been nothing but supportive of me. And like, they're my biggest fans and, and they're not salespeople either. Like my mom's a lawyer and my dad's an architect. They're pretty traditional, you know, they're like, go to college, get your degree, get a job. So they are like, the whole like door to door world is like, was pretty foreign to them as it is to most people. Um, but they've like, they've literally helped me so much. And like my dad will send me like a meme of Arnold Schwarzenegger every morning being like, go do it, man. Like <laughs> something like that. So, uh, they've, they've really just been incredible. Awesome. Did you, uh, finish college? I'm pending. I have like, 25 credits left. So <laughs> just waiting for the time that it makes sense to get that done. It, it's, there's no reason I, I won't, uh, I will at some point, but for now I'm, I'm all about maximizing what makes sense. And right now it just doesn't make sense. Love it. So you are officially a college dropout. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, most billionaires are college dropouts. <laughs> I, I would say, I would say I'm pending. That's, that's, that's where I'm at on that. <laughs> that's what you tell mom and dad. Exactly. All right. That's fair. Your college dropout. <laughs> I love it. I dropped out of college three times. There you go. <laughs> Multi Multi-millionaire now, almost have $30,000 in passive income in a month from knocking on doors. So hey. proud to be a college dropout. hundred percent, man. Let's, uh, let's talk really quickly about these. Um, I want to go back to the, the first year you hit golden door 2021. Um, cool. Let's bring you back there. You, uh, you know, you, you had a thousand accounts, thousand three accounts. Your ACV was seven oh seven oh five. Um, walk me back there, man. Where where was your uh, where was your mindset at going into the season? How did you prepare for that? Cool. Um, so preparing. I mean, one of the biggest things I'll say is like. Dude, it's just hard to do something if you're not getting coached 
talking to people that have already done that thing, I would even venture to say it's like almost impossible, you know? Yep. So, I mean, number one, I just say like, I mean, John Taylor, he's like one of the owners at the grit. Dude, that guy, <laughs> that guy is so legit. It's crazy. Um, he's one of the people I respect like the most in my entire life. So he did a thousand accounts back to back years. And, uh, I don't know. It's just cool. Cause like every time I call him or talk to him, like I know the advice is coming from the place of someone that did it. Right. Oh, yeah. So you really take that to heart. And, uh, you know, Drew, obviously the year that we were in Indy, he did it. Um, Cody Olive, he did it. So it's like, I knew those guys had done it. So when it's getting hard, I can call them and be like, dude, <laughs> like, let's be real. How the frick did you do this? This is so hard. And you know, that feedback I got is one of the main reasons I would attribute that I did it. Cause at the end of the day, it's, I know not everybody's religious, but like, I'm sure you can attest like to do anything you have to have just hope and faith and belief. And that's one of the biggest things, man, I'll say is like, I just believed that I would because I had people that told me I could, and I had advice from people that had been there. So I knew I could trust it. You know, yeah. I knew it wasn't just fool's gold. Mm. And so, you know, that definitely helped. And anybody that has done a thousand accounts, I mean, they know there's just no way around it being a lot of work. Like, I don't care how good you are. It's just a lot of work. It's just time, dude. So much time. And, uh, I mean, it's selling 10 accounts a day for a hundred days and that's incredibly efficient, right? I didn't do that when I did that. So like, even if you're insanely efficient, it takes just a ton of time. So it's really just having the resolve to be like, I'm going to put my head down and like day after day, like I'm going to get this done. And like, as far as like the challenges goes that year, I, I got like deathly sick for like two weeks. So that definitely extended the time because I just wasn't able to knock during that time. And then I also bought my first house, uh, in the middle of that summer, uh, and I never like went and saw it. Luckily, my wife helped me out a ton with the whole process. I wouldn't have been able to do it without Jess. Um, but it's like, I just had a ton of stuff going on, like in the middle of the summer. And uh, the like, just the resolve and like, you know, there's tons of stuff going on. And then you have a two day and you're like, what, a, what am I doing, dude? Is this even realistic? Like... <laughs> I'm going to be out here till freaking December. And, uh, luckily enough, I was able to, you know, drag myself out of those times when it got hard and come back and have big days. And, uh, you know, it's, it's literally, it's a battle of, of wits and wills and, uh, you just got to gear up for it and you got to be smart about it too. Um, you're not going to sell 15 accounts every day, no matter how good you are. And so you just got to play the game, dude, and you got to stay in it and have that, that hope and belief. And that's what I, I was able to do that year. I love that, dude. <clears throat> you can tell it's uh, it's heartfelt. Um, let's talk about some of those struggles you said, if you want to get a little more detail on that, because sure. as you know, most successful entrepreneurs, door to door people, you know, Real estate agents, insurance agents, people that follow you guys and follow us. It's like we all go, we're all either going through something, we're about to go through something, or we're just getting out of something. So talk to me a little bit about those struggles and uh, how did you, how did you keep the will to win? Cool. That's a great question. Um, I think it, I think it's actually like a pretty deep answer. Um, the reason I say that is like, I think a lot of people have 
a different reaction to like rejection and failure. And I think really the difference between like high achievers, it really isn't even like about the amount of times you get rejected or failure. It's really about like what, what the result of like the rejection and failure becomes because of it. And like, what I mean by that is like, a lot of people will get rejected like 20 times and then all of a sudden, like their hope is just drained and they suck because of this and this, and they can't do this and the, and it just piles on. Whereas I feel like the other people, the like, there's another person that gets rejected 20 times and, and then he's like, instead of just letting it like kind of bring him down, it's like, okay, I have lost because like, I don't do this well. And I've lost because like, I can't do this part of the pitch or I've lost because like, and they're actually like identifying why they lose and it like kind of like fuels them. And it's like, I'm not going to lose because of X, Y, and Z anymore. And I really think that like, that's something that I've mastered, like not to be cocky or arrogant, no, but no, like, I want you to be confident. <laughs> right. Um, this is listen, let me go, let me stop you there for really quick. This sure. happens a lot. This happens a lot on the show. Um, and the reason why it is, is the most beta bull crap sh stuff you can say. Uh, if you're that good, Chuck, you've obviously hit golden door multiple years in a row. You have the right to say this stuff, dude. For sure. You have my permission to talk <laughs> about it because you made it. Anybody that's on this show is the top 1%. Yeah. I don't want you to ever say anything beta crap like that. You're alpha, <laughs> you're top G, you're allowed to do that. Yeah, and I, I understand the humility there, but you got to understand where humility starts to destroy people for sure, where they don't have confidence in themselves because it's all about being meek. And I don't think Jesus was, uh, someone that got stepped on for sure. Yeah. No, so I totally that's our model here. <laughs> you know what I mean? This homie, you know, okay. So go, go back. Cool. In. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I just think that's something I've mastered, honestly, is when I lose, I identify why I lost. Thank you. And I just make a vow to, to not lose in that way again. I'll still lose, but not that way. You know, I'm not going to lose because I like get beat off the door in the intro. Or I'm not going to lose because like I didn't explain the contract right, right? It's like when I make a mistake, I actually identify it and I'm like, I'm not going to do that again. And I just keep stacking wins because if I'm not going to lose in that way, well, I'm never going to lose in that way again. And then I identify another way that, that I lose and okay, I'm not going to lose in that way again, you know? And once you build up all of those ways, you're not going to lose. Well, all of a sudden it gets pretty hard to lose, right? <laughs> Because there's only so many ways that, that, you know, you can lose. And I just like to view it that way. Cause at the end of the day, it really, that's really what it comes down to. You either lose on the door or you win. And like, I, I want to try to eliminate all the ways that I'm, that I'm losing. Right. And to kind of talk about like that, like rejection part in your question, this is just like, when I lose, I get fired up. Like it literally fires me up because I'm just like, I'm not going to like, you, I'm not going to lose because of you. Right. And you know, I'm never going to talk to that person again, but it's like, now I know for the future, I'm not going to lose because of X, Y, and Z. And you just keep stacking. And, uh, I think that's like, I think that's where a lot of people get lost is they lose and then it, and they like, they just won't like face it. Right. And they, and, uh, so, uh, Dame Lillard is like one of my favorite people straight up of all time, not even just athletes. And, um, I don't know if you know, he plays for the Blazers, right? You know who he is? Cool. Uh, so he just broke like the Blazers all time leading scoring record a couple weeks ago and he gave a speech after and uh really resonated with me because he basically said like you know like i'm not the tallest i'm not the strongest i'm not the fastest 
but I have mastered looking myself in the mirror. I'm the best at that. And I like to think like, I'm exactly like that. And in, in this job, because I'm not, I'm not the best. I'm not, the, I'm not the smartest. I'm not the best salesman. Like I don't have the best sales skills, but I've mastered looking myself in the mirror and being like, okay, I, I, I didn't make this sale today because of that. So let's work on that. And I think most people are too afraid to face their weaknesses to like make the necessary adjustments. So I think that's like what really sets, sets me apart is sure. I'm, I'm a mixed bag of strengths and weaknesses, just like everyone else. But I, I have the guts to face my weaknesses and be like, cool. I, I suck at this. How can I get better? How can I get better? Where did that come from? Um, you know, is there a moment? Is there a season? Yeah. Did you get I, humiliated? Like, no, I, I like that there? question. Um, this might sound like kind of far fetched, but I really actually believe in it. So in sixth I grade, you, I just, just, just mean you, bro. I want you to, <laughs> yeah, dude. So in sixth grade, yeah. I, uh, I played football growing up, obviously. And I wasn't, dude, I'm, I'm five, eight. I'm not a big dude. Like, <laughs> uh, and I was playing, you know, Georgia football, which is as legit as it gets. Uh, you know, like half the guys I played with in high school are in the NFL right now, you know? So in sixth grade, we had this, uh, drill where we like lost a game or something. And my coach, his name is Coach Hamilton. Shout out to that guy. He's a freaking beast. Uh, basically, he was like, screw practice. Everybody come over to this sand pit. Because there was this like part of the field that was just sand. And we got in a circle around it. And he's like, cool. Uh, calls, to, calls a guy to the center. And he's like, all right, pick, pick a dude you want to fight. And we're like in sixth grade, right? Like this is intense. And uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, just pick someone you want to fight. And uh, you would pick someone and he's like, all right, get him to the ground. And he'd blow the whistle. And like we're in our football pads, right? But this is just like brawls. And uh, funny enough, like that experiment, that experience just taught me to be a freaking like dog. And like, to just like, not, not let anything really like get me down or anything. Cause it was literally like a fight to the death, dude. Like we were like punching each other, like with gloves and we have helmets, but it was just like literally just a brawl, you know? And after we did that for like a week, dude, we like literally never lost again. Cause we were just dogs. And, uh, <laughs> I think that's, I almost like take that experience with me and like everything I do. And like when I started door to door, like it was like a brawl, right? Cause you're just getting like rejected, like pretty much punched in the face metaphorically by all these people every day. And I was just like, Nope, like I'm not letting this happen. Like I would tell my, I would tell my friend Jackson, uh, who, you know, at the grit, right. Like, it's like, dude, every day I go out to area and I like, I try to be nice and then I get punched in the face in like the first two or three doors. And then I just become like, I turn into someone different, dude, <laughs> for real. Right. And, uh, not that I'm like still not nice, but it's like, you just get that edge where like, oh no, like this is happening and like, I'm going to punch back metaphorically. So I really think it. A lot of it comes from like that experience. It's pretty awesome. Have, uh, have you talked about that recently? I haven't actually. Um, I like told my, I told Jess about it, my wife, like probably like three or four months into when we were married because she literally just asked me straight up. Cause like, I'm like very even keel, like very nice. And like pretty much all my, like, that's just my personality, like how I am with people. Um, 
like a lot of people are just like shocked that like I'm as good as I am on the doors because I just don't I'm not really like a lot of the other guys in this industry to be honest uh where I just like walk in the room and I have this like alpha energy that like I'm the goat like I really don't um but and she was like why like why are you because she was like watching me perform at such a high level that year because we got married right before I went to sell a thousand accounts and so she's watching me like sell tons of accounts every day and she's just like why do you like how do you do that why and so I told her that story um and I think she's pretty much the only one I've ever told that story to actually Mm. I love that dude (laughs) <laughs> it, it brings up a uh, it brings up a quote which obviously i think most everybody's heard this quote but it's uh it's mike tyson quote everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth yeah dude yep i, I want to i kind of want to sink into that a little bit bro because uh chuck i don't think we talk about it enough our generation um two generations before us you know world war ii breeded in breeded World War II created the microwave, created the, you know, the the, the good times, right? And uh, I know they talk about it a lot. I'm not sure if you know, um, are you a fan of Andy Frisella or Ed Milet? Um, Remind me who they are. Andy Frisella is a... Uh, um, uh, Ed Milet's a big... They're, they're both in R, an Arte Syndicate. They run an Arte Syndicate. Um, Andy is... Uh, um, not phase one, but four. Um, oh my gosh. Why do I not know his product? I've heard of Ed Milet before. Hey, Andy, Andy Frisell is the creator of uh, 75 hard. And why oh, in the heck do I not know his stinking, the, the, the MF CEO project. Uh, there it is. First form. Oh, I, I keep wanting, I always want to call it. I, I got like, <laughs> I have dyslexia. Um, like pretty bad. I want to call it first phase because first phase is uh, something out of Vegas. His product is called first form really good supplements. Actually, uh, I've used quite a, quite a few of his supplements in the past. Um, but first form, I'm in his mastermind, uh, Arte syndicate, Andy Frisella. He talks a lot about, talks a lot about, uh, just how our generation, cause he's older. He's in probably his, his like late thirties, early forties. Right. Um, yeah. Dude's a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Like my mentor Cole Hatter is like mentored by him. Right. So cool. he talks a lot about our, how our generation, the entrepreneurs, if we're going to, if we're going to save America, right. If we're going to save America, the entrepreneurs need to step up their game. Um, because if we're not, if the good guys are not the guys with the money, then the bad guys are the guys with the money. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, long story short, going back to that, you know, the whole, the, the whole Mike Tyson quote, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. I think that one of the problems that, and I talk about in my book, Purposeful Profit, Mastering the Millennial Mindset for Success, I talk about it, how like our generation is, is, is getting softer because not necessarily a bad way, but we're getting softer because we're told that like, you know, we're privileged and, you know, we are, you know, we are cocky, we're arrogant, you know, we, we, uh, what is that? What do they even say to us? They say, uh, uh, you know, entitled. we had everything ha- and tied there. It is the entitlement thing. We've been having everything handed to us. And I'm like, well, your parents are the ones that created the damn microwave acting like you guys don't have it better. Like, qual- like, what did you want? Like, if you, ha- it's so freaking conflicting, Chuck, it pisses me off. It's yeah. like, I just want like, what do you, if, if, it, if, if the kids were in the room and they had some sort of a therapist or coach there and they're like, well, what do you want for your kids? I just want my kids to have a better life. And then they f- complain about how we're entitled. And I'm like, you mother efforts are the ones that are entitled here, right? And then, you know, they complain about us getting on the internet. And like, you know, you're, you're stuck to your phones. You, you have, you're on your phones even at, at dinner. It's like, well, yeah, because now I have to because the damn QR codes, the freaking menus are on the phone. So, like, screw off. Yeah. Everyone has. So, in other words, we're, our, not all of our generation, but it's one of the reasons why I love the door-to-door industry so much because we have to have this grit. Like, there has to be that, like – toughness in you to be able to do this for a long time as many counts as you've sold as many doors as you've knocked and years as you've done you have to have that that thing inside you that dog right that eric thomas that you got that dog bro you got that dog thousand percent dude you got that dog Mm -hmm. so everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth um it it reminded me of that because you know 
I, I don't, I don't know uh, if there's anybody that's, that's, that's a, that's a four uh, that stands for the millennial generation. It's me, bro. Like I can't stand when older people talk crap on millennials. And I'm like, I mean, I've got, I've got multiple word tracks that I can destroy their argument of how millennials are entitled. Like, mm -hmm. they, and it's just like a stand up for us. Cause I'm like, dude, no, like the more, the more oppressed we feel as millennials, right? The, the less work we're going to do when in reality there, you know, it's like, Hey, come fix my uh, alarm system and my, my security system or my, my cell phone, my Facebook is it's like you, you need us. Like why you, you know, why you, why are you talking crap? And then all of a sudden you need us. So you better chill out on that stuff. So yeah, everyone, everyone wants to come in and be a golden door award winner. I posted this the other day, everyone, everyone wants to be a golden door award winner, but the problem is they haven't decided to, they just, they just, they just dream about it. Right. Everyone wants to, you know, it's, it's really easy to see guys like you, you know, Drew's Cody's all these guys, right. John Taylor's and be like, yeah, man, uh, you know, I, I want to be a golden door award winner. I want to do this, but they don't have the, they weren't taught by either their parents, coaches, somebody, which is what I love that you said earlier. Like, dude, if you don't have people in your corner or in your network, in your, in, in your community that have that are, are where you want to be. How do you expect to get there? It's, it's darn near impossible. It really is. hundred percent. So, so what, what is, what, what is it that, what is it that you think our generation is missing? <clears throat> what, like everyone wants to come in. Like as you recruit, you've recruited how many people now? Right. And you know, some guys make it, some don't. What's the difference there? What, who's the guys that make it versus the guys that don't? Yeah. Girls too, whatever. That That's a really good question. I mean, I really think like, at the end of the day, it just kind of boils down to like, you know, it's like people, a lot of people just don't have an understanding of like what it takes to, to really like, to really like get ahead. I mean, it's like everyone wants to feel comfortable with like doing your typical track, right? Where you go to college, you graduate, you get your nine to five. And it's like, people are just comfortable with it. And like, to, to like take a risk to get ahead, like they're just not willing to like put forth the effort into that risk. Right. And, and that's what, it, that's kind of what it seems like to me. It's like, maybe they do take the leap and take the risk, but then they get punched in the mouth and they're like, oh yeah, like, you know, nine to five is like way better bet. It's way safer. That's what it seems like to me. It's just like people don't have like the courage of their convictions to like understand that like you're not just going to go out there and like get it handed to you. It's like you got to go out there and fail hundreds, thousands of times before you get it. And I feel like people just aren't willing to fail. They're not willing to deal with like the humiliation or like the rejection or like the, dis not like despair, but like, you know what I mean? Just that like l loss of hope, like, and then it's like at the first sign of those things, they're like, I'm out. Like <laughs> this, this isn't for me. Like th this isn't sustainable or like they're not willing to do like, to like go through what you need to go through to, to reach, you know, to actually get ahead. Okay. Let's stop there. Practically speaking, you're in the middle of your summer. You just got your butt kicked 2021 and in 2022. What do you do? What are the word tracks you tell yourself? What do you do? Obviously, I know you said earlier, you call, you call some of the guys that are in your group. You do that. Yeah. But now, but now, now what? When you're yeah. now all by yourself. Yep. Chuck, what do you do, bro? Give Good question. Dude, so for me, it's just like. I, I will always be the man, like, regardless of the result, I'm the man, like I'm the best, I'm the best person that will ever talk to these people about pest control. I'm literally the best. And I know that. And so I don't care if I'm at one deal at 7 PM and I've been getting told no all day, I'm still the man. Like. <laughs> And I just believe it. And more often than not, it literally will just manifest and I'll, I'll still finish with five. Maybe I won't get 10, but I'm still the man.
Like I still own that place. And I, I think that a lot of people will can kind of get discouraged, right? After getting told no 30 times and it's 7 PM and you're like, I'm not the man. Like I suck. I kind of suck, but maybe I lost it. Maybe I don't got it anymore. Maybe yeah. I maybe I don't got it anymore. And you really just, you just have to fight those feelings because they're just not, they're just not true. You know, it's like your belief in yourself is everything. And, you know, it's not even like my belief is based off like pie in the sky. Right. It's like, I know, I know I'm the man. And so I just believe it. And I'll, and like, eventually, eventually the numbers will, you know, line up, you know, maybe they don't that day. That's the other thing too, is like, I feel like there's way too much of an industry focus on like the day when in reality, like the day doesn't matter. Right. The, what matters is like the totality of the summer, which is basically like, you know, 10 hours a day for a hundred days is a thousand hours. Right. So what really matters is a thousand hours and like, who cares if six of those hours sucked? There's a thousand of them. Right. So it's like, who, who cares if you had a two day, you might have a 14 day tomorrow. And then that's 16 and 20 hours. It's pretty damn good. Right. So it's like, yeah, it's like you just, what you do have to control though is like your attitude and that can never change because that's what ultimately will get you those deals on the following day, you know? So, and a lot of guys struggle with that, especially golden door guys, top performers. Um, a lot of times, a lot of times when I, obviously when I do my, you know, going Facebook live, Instagram live, whatever, or do individual coaching or stuff like that we're doing in the mastermind. I, 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 if guys haven't ever hit a golden door in a year, what I do is I say, let's have a, let's have your first golden door month. Yeah. Cause if you can't have a golden door month, how in the world are you going to have a golden door year? For sure. And, and I, I try to, I try to break it down to the ridiculous and make it a lot easier, lower the bar of expectation. A lot of times when guys are like, yo, I want to hit the golden door. Like I, I don't obviously think, you know, at the end when Sam was doing his, his thing and he's like, you know, who's going to hit a golden door this year, stand up. If you're going to hit a golden door, I don't think anybody was sitting down. Yeah. You know, it's like, obviously exactly. everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to go get a golden door. But then they don't have a, they don't have a plan. They don't have a structure. They don't. Yeah. I really like what you said though. Like it making it easier than you think. Cause in all reality, it, it actually kind of is like I had a one day last year. I literally had a one day. You knocked the whole day. I knocked the whole day. No way. I had a one day. Shout out to the uh, 10 solar reps who were blitzing the hood same time as me, but oh. nonetheless, I, I, you know, circumstances happen and it's like 10 you know, guys, not... one hood. Wow. They need to fire their man. Their, their, their <laughs> okay, 10, 10 is an exaggeration, but still pretty much everyone that answered the door is like, I'm done with solar. I don't get like, you know, <laughs> so it's like, that was definitely a, a harder circumstance type day, but. Um, and you stayed in the hood. I stayed in the hood. Let's go. Let's go, dude. Um, dude, I don't, I don't let that stuff like bring me down. You know, it's like, cool. I had a one day. I'm still the man. <laughs> like that literally doesn't matter, you know? Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I stay the course and I think a lot of, I've seen a lot of people that are like shooting for golden door and then they have a. Uh, eight week, which is pretty bad and pest. And it's like, all right, calling it off. Yeah. It's like, dude, who cares? Keep going. There's so much time. There's literally so much time in the summer. And I think people kind of, you don't have to sell 20 a day to, sell, to get a golden door. I think that's what it seems like to people, but you really don't. You just need to be kind of for pest. You just kind of need to be in like that 
six to 12 range every day. And some days you'll pop off and do 15. Some days you'll have four, but it all evens out as long as you're just like six to 12. Like that's, that's pretty doable. Once you get to, once you can sell, you know, three, 400 accounts, like if you put the work in, that's, that's a doable thing. All right, bro, let me transition. Um, let me ask you this, uh, and I appreciate you sharing that. That's really good insight there. If you if you, uh, if you got anything from that one, uh, drop it in the comments below. What, did, uh, what was some nuggets that Chuck just said that uh, really stood out to you? Chuck, who's your hero? That's, that's a good question. Um, I don't think I have like a like definitive one guy that's my hero i have a lot of heroes though sure and i'll list off a couple of them yeah sure let's go over that uh Who's one there? one i already mentioned dame lillard yep. dude i just love that guy uh he's just like built from the right stuff and he's not cocky he is just so good and he's clutch mm-hmm. and he just like I just love that he's like he dude, he's a six one kid from Oakland who went to Weber State, right? And like now he's like top ten player of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. Because he's just a dog and he he knows what he's good at. He's no he knows what he's not good at and he looks that in the mirror and he becomes great at the things that he wasn't good at. You know, I just love that. Um, I love, I love a lot of NFL players, honestly. Um, right now I'm like a huge fan of Micah Parsons because he's just dominating the league in his second year. You know, he's not afraid of anyone and I love that. And, uh, He's just amazing at what he does. Um, my dad is honestly one of my biggest heroes. Uh, we're, he's like pretty much nothing like me and what he's good at because he's an art at, architect. Yeah. Uh, he has his own business. He like designs hotels and restaurants. And uh, he's amazing at it. Like he's so good. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like he has some yearly salary, like to depend upon. He just goes out and like finds projects and talks to people and like uses his connections and he kills it every year. Um, and he just has an incredible work ethic. Like you, you will never find a day where like he's not in his office grinding and he's not going to the gym in the morning grinding. Like he just won't, he'll, he'll always be there. So he's like a huge model of like consistency to me in, you know, what it takes to, to build a life that, that you want to live. You said, you said, um, I appreciate that. And let me ask you this one question on that and then we'll transition. What is, what is one thing that all three of those people, Dame, Micah and your dad have in common that you admire? or you want to emulate, maybe you don't have it and you're, you're trying to get there. What, what is something that you see in those guys that you're like, yeah, dude, I need to get to that point. I think, I think that the thing they all share in common is just like the really just like the passion and the belief that like they can be the best. Like they're willing to recognize like where they fall short but that, but despite that, they still believe that they can be the best, you know? And that's something that I really admire because at the end of the day, like, like not everyone is LeBron James, right? Where you're just like perfectly built to excel, <laughs> not to discredit anything that he's done. He's obviously insane, but like, 
at the end of the day, he is six nine, two fifty, and like can jump out of the gym. So <laughs> a lot of advantages there. Uh, but I, I just love that like Micah Parsons isn't the biggest dude, you know, he's really not, but he's explosive. And like he's still getting better, even though he's debatably the best defensive player in the league already. And I just love that. It's like focus on what you can get better, and like you'll surprise yourself with how fast you actually reach the top. Thanks. I love that. Appreciate that. Um, all right, let's transition. Um, you said. Um, when we were chatting before the show and uh, even before uh, through Instagram, you're like, bro, I got some stuff that I don't think anybody else is going to talk about. So I want to give you the, I want to give you the floor, bro, before, before I try to ask these last few questions. And I want to give you the show, the, the floor and just be like, dude, what, what were those things that you're like, dude, I've got, I've got some good stuff that I want to talk about. So is, what does that, what does that look like? Yeah. Uh, one of the main things I want to talk about is, in door to door, like there's a lot of this mindset that it's like me, 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 me. Like, where can I get the best deal? Like, where's like the best area for me? Like, where's, you know, how am, how am I gonna get the most out of this situation? And it's just so self focused. The ironic thing is, like. I've had the privilege to be around the most elite guys in the industry at the grit and none of them are that way, like in, in the slightest. And that's like, I honestly credit that a lot of my success, like to that philosophy is it's not about you. Like it's about the team or it's about, it's not about you. It's about your family. Like it's just not about you. And I think like, that's just something that goes so under the radar with like how, how this whole industry is, is like that the actual secret to being the best is like, is really just focusing on the people around you and like making it the best situation for them. Cause ironically enough, that's going to ultimately lead to the best situation for you. And like that specifically helped me because like a lot of times knocking doors is you just there's when you're just doing it for yourself, there's just not a ton of like fulfillment in it. Even if you are making great money, what's really fulfilling is like the guys on your team coming up to you like towards the end of the summer and just being like, dude, I would not have been able to like do the summer if it wasn't for you. Or like me being out in the doors and it's 9 p.m. on a Saturday night and it's raining. And like, I know that at the end of the day, like I need to create a, a great life, like for me and Jess. And like, I'm going to have kids down the road and like, they need me. And so I'm not knocking these doors till 930. Like for me, I could care less, right? but I'm doing it for them. And that's what keeps me going. And that's ultimately what elevates me. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, when it's like end of the year competition, we have the rumble at the grit, uh, gets pretty rowdy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing that will make me knock a door at 10 PM. If it wasn't like, because my dogs need me to get one more deal to like to win, right? It's like, I'm not doing that for me. <laughs> like if it was me, I would just, I would have gone home an hour ago, right? Yeah. But I will stay out there for the dogs because they need me, you know? And I feel like that's low key, kind of like a cheat code for killing it at this job. Don't make it about you, dude. It's, it's 106 degrees, cool. Do it for the guys. You know, this neighborhood is like no soliciting. Everyone's pissed. Dude, it's not about you. Do it for the guys. And I think once you can really like believe that and understand that, the job actually gets way easier. And 
I just think that's uh that's really been something that's super helpful to me. I love that. Let's sink into that a little bit, dude. I um I think that is probably the most destructive thing in life is being selfish. Mm-hmm. It's not just in the grit. It's not just in pests. It's not just in door to door sales. It's not even just in business. I think it's in, in life. The biggest Jesus, Jesus says, uh, I have come to serve, not be served. Yep. You know, uh, I think it's Matthew 28, 26 or 26, 28. One of those, um, even the son of man came to serve and not be served. And, uh, obviously for us being spiritual men, Christian, like it's, uh, that's our model, right? That's who we're, that's who we are to model match is, you know, our savior. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge, it's a huge, it's a huge, um, misnomer or miss, you know, classification that you have to we are, we are told I'm, okay so here here it goes again guys i'm saying it again i am mikey lucas the anti-guru guru uh, i'm like the dude i like i can't stand most of the gurus on the internet because they basically say look out for 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 i yep when in reality billionaires look out for the guys that are they're around their team yep you know everyone even elon musk right it's like whenever elon's Whenever I'm a big Elon Musk fan, if you don't already know that, huge Elon Musk fan. Um, whenever Elon goes and he's interviewed, he's like, "Elon, how do you start all these things?" It's like almost every single time he's like, "Yeah, you guys see me, but like the team is like it's not just me. Like there's a, it's not just like one guy building all these things. Like I've got a team that that we put on, and he's more about the team. So." I mean, I want to dive into that a little bit more, dude. I want to unpack that. Um, what does that really mean to you? Like, why, why are, why is it that our culture is taught to be the me generation or the me too or whatever the heck that's called, right? Like, why, why is it like? I don't know, maybe that's not exactly what I'm talking about. I don't even know what that is, but uh, I guess I know what it is now. I just forgot, but not the me too situation. But uh, um, God. All right, cut that out now. <laughs> Yeah, dude, Chuck, tell me, tell me more about that. Let's dive into that, dude. Like what, why, why is that so important in your culture, in your life? And where do you think that's really going to, what's the opposite of that? First off, like why, where, where, where does your life go? If it's just about Chuck and Chuck alone? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. I just think like, it's kind of funny. Um, I was actually talking to my, to Jess about this the other day and I was like, wouldn't it be funny if we, instead of having like earning money, we all earned coconuts and like, we just traded coconuts like for stuff. And like this dude has hundreds of thousands of coconuts. Like, look at him, look at how sick he is. And it's just like, it just kind of makes you realize like how actually unimportant money is in the, in, in the regards of like looking at someone's status, like it's definitely important. Cause like just using the scenario, we need coconuts to survive and like ultimately to be able to be in a great spot, you do need hundreds of thousands of coconuts, but it's not the coconuts themselves that like make that person great. Right. So, <laughs> I just think like when you take the focus off of yourself, you, you kind of just start to realize it, it really is about people at the end of the day and just making an impact on people because you're not going to take coconuts with you like to the next life. Right. Yeah. But what we, what you will take is like the impact you had mm. on your family and like on other people. And so I just think like, that's something that we should strive to like attain instead of it just being like me, 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 I want all the coconuts. Like, dude, how can I, how can I leave like a lasting impact on this person that is going to last beyond the paycheck he gets at the end of the summer. Wow. And I'm like super proud to 
to know that I have had that impact on the guys on the teams I've been with. And like, I honestly take that away more than the money that I've made, you know? And I, I just think no one really like thinks about that or like views that views stuff that that way. Cause wow. they're just focused on getting the coconuts, right? They just want the money. And it's like, that's great, but it doesn't, that's not going to leave a lasting impact or leave you a legacy, you know? That's beautiful. Yeah, that's really deep. I think the hardest part that I struggle with with that, Chuck, is that in my... I guess 12 years of business now is the people that are selfish. Some of those guys, they're going to be at the finish line with us. Yeah. And that's, that's like for me, that's one, of, one of the, one of the hardest pills to swallow is that some of those guys, not all, most of them are going to fail most, but there's still going to be some of those guys that are self-seeking, self-serving, self-praising some of those guys will still be at that same exact finish line when you get there too i think the key difference there chuck is those guys families are going to be a muck not going to have friends going to have to pay for their friends mm -hmm. they're not going to have true values true relationships their experiences are all going to be facades fugazi fugazi yep Cause it's funny, dude. Really it's like, you really think about it and you're like, we're all, cha we're all chasing that like ultimate happiness in life. Right. Yeah. And recently I've really started to think about like what that actually looks like. Hmm. And obviously like my goal in door to door is to get to that point where I can, I have enough money to invest where I can make the passive income that I don't need to work if I don't want to. Right. And it's like, it's funny how we go through these stages where like, when I get to this, that's when I know I'll finally be happy. Or when I get to this, that's when I'll finally be happy. You know, when I have, when I get married, when I have a house, you know, that's when I'll finally be happy. And I'm obviously pretty young, but I feel like I've come to the realization that dude, regardless of your scenario, if Elon Musk dropped two billion dollars on your front doorstep dude i don't think you would i don't think you mikey would would actually feel that different about your life i really wouldn't like you sure you'd be stoked right but that wouldn't give you some sort of like ultimate like dude i finally made it like now i can be happy it really wouldn't you know and that's something that i've come to realize and it's like, we got to create that now. There's no time like the present. Like you have to create that in your everyday life. There's no amount of money that will make you be like, dude, I'm finally happy. I made it. I don't have to work. Like you still need to like figure out your purpose, you know? And we, did, we just did a training at the grit uh, two weeks ago. Uh, John Taylor did it and he talked about that and we talked to, he shared a story of this guy who, um, he was married and he had a kid, they got in a car accident and he lost his wife and his daughter, super tragic. And he was meeting with the therapist to kind of get over it. And he asked the therapist, like, how? do you think I'll ever be happy again? And the therapist told him, I don't think like happiness should be your goal right now. Your goal is to find a purpose. And once you're achieving that purpose, like that's when you'll find true happiness. And for me, that, that was a really like reflective moment for me. Cause it's like, what am I really chasing here? And like, 
am I chasing money or like, what am I actually, what, it, what really is it? And for me, I, f I just feel like my like main purpose in life is to make people feel like they matter. Like that's, that is like my ultimate goal. Like I want to make Jess feel like she matters more than anyone. I want to make my family feel like they matter more than anyone. I want to make all the people I work with feel like they matter regardless of how much money they have or where they come from or how cool they are. Like, I don't care about that stuff. Like we're all God's children. And I feel like if I can make people genuinely feel like they matter, I've, I've like achieved my purpose in life and not to get like super deep, but I, I really feel like this job is like one of the best avenues that you can do to, to kind of achieve that goal. My purpose is to make people feel like they matter. Dude, I love that. Thanks dude. That is so dope. My, uh, you've said purpose a lot. One of my, uh, like Mikey Lucas taglines is on purpose for purpose comes from, um, a couple things. Um, the book, uh, per, um, I think my book is called purposeful profit. Um, there's a book called purpose driven life. If you ever read it, dude, uh, pastor Rick Warren, super great book. If you've never read it, um, like, Dude, we all have val extreme amounts of value, um, but but how do you how do you unwrap that and show somebody that they have their value? One of them is by doing hard things, like door to door sales, because yeah. I don't think people. I, at the end of the day, I don't, I really don't think our generation sees how valuable we really are because we were told so many times, you freaking overprivileged, you know, technology face phones in the face kids, right? Don't know anything. That's why I, it's funny. Like I say it all the time and I, I don't, I'm not doing it to like manifest it. I'm just doing it to like almost throw like a, what's this kid actually saying? Why is he saying that? I say it all the time. I go, yeah, millennials, you know, we'll ne never get anything right. We're idiots. We're stupid. And it's like, I'm not doing it to like, I'm doing it to like kind of throw, almost throw it in the face. Like, yeah, millennials. Like it's almost like, you know, on a doorstep. Hey, I know you're cooking dinner. I just ate. Don't worry about it. Hey, I know you're walking out the door right now. Don't worry about it. I'll just be real quick. For sure. Hey, you know, I, I know, I know you, I know you've had 20, 20 pest control guys knocking your door in the last couple of days. That's not what I'm here for. I just want to let you know, like, dude, I love your truck, dude, your new grand wagon whatever, you know, whatever. Right. I just bring it up. Cause I'm like, dude, yeah. Millennials. I know we can never get anything right. We're idiots. We're stupid. Yep. Cool. Now that I've said that, now that, you, that, now that I call out what you, I know you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the live living on purpose for purpose that that, that whole like purpose driven lifestyle is uh, is super important to be able to add value to people, which is again what this show is all about is to help Golden Door Award winners understand that it is so much more than just money, Chuck. Like you said, bro, I'm I'm in full alignment with you, brother. Mo so much more than money. It's so much more than you know just the vacations, the Ferraris, the Bentleys, whatever the Rolls Royces, the the shoes, right? Like, bro, I saw your shoes. Every single one of the guys at the grit, I felt like all insecure because I wasn't wearing my J's. <laughs> I got one pair of Jordans. They're low top, all whites. Uh, Jordan ones, I think is what they're called. Dope. I wore them the second day. My yeah. sister got them for me. Sister and brother-in-law got them for me. But yeah, dude, I, uh, I know you have a hard stop and I want to respect your time, dude. And uh, bro, this is, I got to have you back on because I've got like 25 more questions. I want to know cool. more. <laughs> I do. Um, it's been, a, it's been an absolute pleasure. Let me ask you this last thing. We'll end here, dude. What is, uh, if, is there, is there one quote that you live by or two quotes you live by? And I know there's probably multiple. Is there any quotes that you live by that you tell yourself all the time? Yeah. It's been the back on your phone before. No, it's honey. been your MySpace, you know, whatever your face. Yeah, I have happened. two. I have two quotes. Uh, the first one, successful people do what unsuccessful people won't do. Um, I love that quote. It's so applicable in like every single aspect of your life, every choice you make, you know, I could go on for a while about that one. Yeah, yeah. And then the second one is, uh, when you see a man standing on top of a mountain, remember he didn't fall there. Whew. Also love that quote. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, I just, there's so much stuff about that quote that I just respect and yeah. admire and hope to, hope to like be an example of in my life. I love that. All right, brother, dude. Well, I, I Chuck, it's been an absolute pleasure, dude. I absolutely hundred percent appreciate your time. Any final words for the golden door winner, award winners out there? Be gritty. Let's go. Uh, be a dog. That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. I mean, I don't think the golden door stage is full of the best salesmen. I really don't I think there's a lot of great salesmen out there that aren't on that stage. I agree. 90% of it is just you and your willingness to, to deal with the crap that comes along with it and just make it through. Let's go, dude. Appreciate your time, brother. Cool, dude. Thanks right, for having me. Of course. Of course. Cheers. You're the man, Mikey. I'll see ya.